and a three, and a two, and a one. It's May 26, 2019. My name is Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number uh, 510. And we're a bit argumentative. What? Just a, Just a smidge. I've never known us to debate back and forth, ever. If you're never. Not, it it never. over, what, 300 episodes that I've been in. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Um, and That's for those idea. people who, aren't li- who haven't been listening, watching live uh, or not a patron, you'll not understand that. Unless you just think it's a general statement of fact, but still, anyways. I see you sipping that tea, Damon. Don't think that that's getting past me. Mm. <laughs> As I said, I don't brew the tea; I just serve it. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man, you like a Captain Janeway smile. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Captain Janeway has coffee. Doesn't she? She doesn't have tea. Sorry. There's coffee in that I, nebula. Well, it's not there's coffee in this thing. There's coffee in that nebula. <laughs> uh, Anywho. Yes. Uh, so, so, Gary. Yes. What the hell are we talking about today? Uh, this stems from some. I'm still having a hard time comprehending it. That's okay. This stems from some re- recent conversations I was having, and it got me thinking about uh, this concept. So today's topic is honesty versus truth. So we say that we want people to tell us how they feel, but do we really? And so, what exactly is the difference between like honesty versus telling the truth? Are they the same thing, or do we confuse them? So we haven't done this in a while, but uh, definition-wise, just so that we are aware of what the technicality is, honesty is an adherence to the facts, uh, fairness and straightforwardness of your conduct, Mm. where the truth is the body of real things and the facts, events. In other words, the state of being of the case um, also could be a judgment, a proposition, uh, or an idea that is accepted as true. We hold these truths to be self-evident. Right. So, in theory, like, honesty is about delivering truth. Mm-hmm. You might want to think about it that way. So, Tea. you could be truthful without being completely honest, because you may Shut leave up. out part of the truth like yeah, how do i look that's kind of a you look fine oh wait no uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> if honesty is a straightforwardness of fact like like you're being i guess authentic uh mm-hmm. in the moment then i think that there's a that there's an understood truthfulness to it yeah I think is, is kind of the, the issue. But really what this is coming down uh, from is, do we want people to be that, uh, I guess, honest, like that authentic with us? Because we live in an age now where I think people are like uncomfortable, like they don't want to upset other people. They don't want to yeah. say certain things. They don't want to post things like they're concerned about like ruffling feathers or mm-hmm. upsetting another into person. And yeah. I can understand that, like, if it comes to people you're not close to. But do we so, adjust that? Do we behave differently for people we do know really well that we consider our 
a chosen family or as friends of mine and I, we call family, which is like your friends okay. that are your family. You know, um, that's kind of where I've been, been thinking about this okay. recently. Go ahead, Damon. It's kind of, for me, it's often been a two-sided thing. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes I want to be honest with, I want to be honest with pretty much everyone. Like I try my best to do that um, in some capacity. However, as you mentioned, in this day and age, especially now when people, it's so easy to offend because you don't maybe not necessarily know the person fully. Um, Mm -hmm. Honesty kind of takes a back seat sometimes, not all the time, but, you know, sometimes it does to where you do your best to make someone feel better without cutting someone down. If that makes sense, like, mm-hmm. um, but like we'll go to the just like initial thing, like how do I look today? You know, if they don't look good, like, I mean, you could try. If you were being honest, you could say that, like, girl, no, like, <laughs> no to none of this. Like, whatever you're wearing, what you have on, that face, that mug, no, no, like, just maybe want to go back into the closet and. Whirlwind another outfit. So it's like um, it's like it, it, it's like you look fine, meaning you're passable. Mm. You know, mm. it's it's okay. You could do better, but it's yeah. fine. Well, I, let me say it this way: that it sounds almost like what Jeff is saying a little bit is that there are different shades or versions of the truth. Whereas yeah. I think honesty is pretty much a hundred percent or zero. Well, like either here's you're being honest or you're not being honest. Where yeah. I think truthful is where you might fudge the truth a little. Like you might not be like some people might call it like you know telling a slight little lie. You know, instead of telling somebody but, like, "Oh, you look very retro. That's a well, lovely the, yesterday the problem... look you're wearing." <laughs> well, the problem is if you include a lie, you're not really telling the truth this not being honest because if anything i think honesty equals truth um it's just you can not be 100 percent honest but still be truthful like as i said how how do i look you look fine like you probably could put on something better instead of just the t-shirt and jeans but Mm. you know you're fine you're okay. That's the, if you want to be oh. honest, you'd be like, I think you could do better. I love this. Mm-hmm. So I just like, so I went on, you know how Google, I'm quick. Like I do Google stuff all the time. So I wrote in Google, does honesty equal truth? Mm-hmm. And there's, um, this is a, from a Forbes website. It says honesty and truthfulness are not the same thing. Being honest means not telling lies. Being truthful means actively making known all the tr- full truth of a matter. Lawyers must be honest, but they do not have to be truthful. It doesn't make sense. It does not compute. It, it does <laughs> in some ways. Okay. So, for example, so a lawyer knows that their client did kill that person. Okay. Right. So that's the truth, right? Mm-hmm. The honest part of it would be spinning the tale of why or what happened, or who's Did responsible, it actually, so or who's actually responsible. So you're trying to. You still doesn't compute because an honest, an so if you, you've seen like if you watch anything Law and Order or whatever, you know you, when you see him like you know the guy's guilty because you've been watching the episode. You know they killed that dude. You know they had sex with that person. You know that it happened. The lawyer, the defense lawyer, has to pretty much basically cast reasonable doubt. And they do that not necessarily by being being truthful, but by giving other things that could potentially put that wedge between what they know to happen and what could have happened. So Mm -hmm. it's really more of a, a factor of delivery. Well, I think it's also about viewpoint. So this was mm-hmm. said to me last night, which I found really interesting, which is everybody has their own truth. 
it doesn't ever mean that the truths are wrong or false. Everybody has their own way of looking at a specific thing. So when, let's say, uh, all three of us go to an event and we all go see someone perform, like let's say we all go see Nakia, and okay. like we get there at different times, and so Jeff, because he knows Nakia and gets a chance to chat with him online ahead of time, he gets like a VIP pass and he's like right up front. And I get, you know, there last and Damon gets there before me. So Damon's like about two rows after Jeff and I'm like, you know, towards the back and I have to stand. I can't sit, blah, blah, blah. All of us see the exact same thing. So all of us have a true experience, but we all have different truths of what this whole experience looks like because of our mm -hmm. perspective. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I think that's what's difficult for people is understanding that your truth and my truth are actually okay. They're just different. Did I confuse everybody? Mm -hmm. No, I got it. I get it. <laughs> I think this is a slightly just... different meaning of truth than what I, what I was understanding so, to be. So I love like the I... reason. So the reason I use that analogy is only because, uh, with to go to what Damon was talking about in the story of or not the story the example of a lawyer, the defense lawyer is going to be giving a different truth of mm -hmm. the facts. Yeah, a different perspective, a different viewpoint. Yeah. Now, whether or not that's considered honest, I think is more the debatable part. And that's that's what I find interesting is that people I think people confuse the two or automatically presume one is the other and vice versa. Like they think that that when you're honest, you're always truthful and that when you're truthful, you're always honest. It's like, mm, maybe, maybe not. No, they're kind of different things. Mm -hmm. But I think that's just in like what each of them are covering. If that makes any sense. Okay. Ah, so that quote was longer than the quote that they gave in Google. Thank you. <clears throat> well, yeah, because Google will only no. It just it gives the example. It gives the you example. Could, you could click into Forbes.com. Yeah, I could have, but I didn't. You know what's crazy, right? <laughs> so it gives the example: a criminal defense lawyer, for example, is in zealously defending a client has no obligation to actively present the truth. Counsel may not deliberately dis mislead the court, but has no obligation to tell the defendant's whole story. So to kind of add on to that, lawyers must be honest, but they do not have to be truthful. I don't think that's the right words for it. Okay. I think well, a I very, very highly regarded publication is wrong. <laughs> Well, it's not it, because it's what what a... I think it is. What I think it more more is is like my initial example is you can tell the truth but not be honest by the fact that you're leaving out all the truth. Also, honesty can also deal with emotions more than truth because truth is about the scientific facts. Well, okay. honesty is kind of more of the emotional thing, like when you're talking to somebody to say how do i look you could say you look fine but you're leaving out other parts uh, you may be leaving out the truth you're not being part of the truth of of you look fine but you could probably put on some better pants or, or something like that like that you're passable but i'm not saying that i'm leaving that part out a lawyer could do a similar thing where he's right. still s stating some facts but the facts could be aren't necessarily as honest because it's not all of the facts or it's misleading facts. Well, right. So I hear what you're saying. I think it's about truth is how you decide to tell it. Being honest is, I think going back to what I said earlier is like, honest is considered like a hundred percent authentic. Like you're not, misleading or leaving things out or mm. uh yeah and you can say in a right way now. to to imply something is honest but but if you do do that you're not actually being honest 
you're just giving the appearance of being honest, if that makes any sense. Which mm-hmm. might be really more of what the Forbes articles is trying to go for. In honesty, they need to sound honest. They need to sound be mm-hmm. sa- in, in all what they're saying. But they're not necessarily saying the, the whole truth. But, I mean, they're not the ones being sworn in. Um, <laughs> hey, they were never told to... <laughs> You know, you never have a shows. really interesting point. This is a total like sidebar now, obviously, this conversation of the topic. But I was like, wait, <laughs> maybe there's a presumption because they are a lawyer that they already have taken an oath to do the truth. But we just don't see that part. I don't know. Nope. They're not on the stand. Honest. They don't take that that oath. Um, promise to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Yeah. That's uh, interesting. Uh, so the, the, this is the thing that I was thinking about in terms of this is that. We say, and I put say in air quotes, we want people to be honest with us. Like we want them okay. to tell us the truth of how they feel about us as individuals, especially from those that are close to us. But I think we struggle with that uh, just as like a human society, um, unless you're culturally like brought up to always speak the truth. I no, think no. human emotions do come into play and you can become concerned about how the other person's going to feel or how they're going to react mm-hmm. and that is going to be like, and that affects everything like shades, all of that kind of stuff in terms mm-hmm. so it's kind of at the core of, of empathy in a lot of ways, you know, you want to, you feel how the other person feels or you want you need to feel how the other person feels. So it, how would you feel if someone told you that you ugly and busted or whatever, or that what you're wearing is not, does not flatter you or something along those lines, you wouldn't necessarily feel good about it. Um, you may, I mean, it's great to get that, you know, a truthful opinion if what you're wearing doesn't work, but, um, it can hurt. Like I'll just put a, put a really fun kind of example. Um, uh, so <laughs> this past Thanksgiving, I went home um, I don't see my family very often, so but I um, but I go home and I visit my you know visit my mom and I visit my sister my mom's side of the family and all that stuff. Um, I came home and my mom um, a little bit later she called me and she was asking me about clothing and she gave, gave made a point to mention like some of the things you were wearing seemed a little tight and I had to explain to her like she asked if I was all right. First of all, you know, how are things going? And then she's like, are you all right? You know, kind of thing. And I'm like, yeah, I'm doing fine. And she goes, well, you know, you know, you look a little big. And I go, yes, I've gained some weight since probably the last time you saw me. Thank you, you know. for noticing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and she just, she went on and said like, you know, well, some of your, you know, clothes was a little tight and I was just a little concerned. And I go, oh, well, you know, it's. I was going transitioning at the time from because it was Thanksgiving, but it wasn't quite it hadn't been cold, cold yet. So I was transitioning from like spring ish clothes to fall clothes. Um, So sweaters and stuff that I haven't worn for a year, maybe. And some I will admit were smaller than I would like to admit, but I wore it anyway because I wanted to. Look, the the size of the clothes was just fine. It was you that changed. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, but she, no- like she was no- just noticing that, like that. And so we, um, she wanted to kind of make it a, a point to explain without being nasty about it that she noticed that clothes didn't look right on me. She did it in a, a nice way, quote unquote, by offering to, because she had a discount at JCPenney. And because she has all these points and stuff, and she offered to buy me clothes. So, oh, okay. So I see. She yeah. was like, she was trying to take into account how you would feel about the fact that she <laughs> felt you need newer clothes because yep. of how they were fitting you, the ones that you've been wearing. Because <laughs> I was fat. She no. she wasn't <laughs> she wasn't being brutally honest by saying, "Girl, you've been so yeah. fat." You need some new clothes. I'll get you some new clothes. Yeah, basically. So she was doing it in a way without, I mean, it protected my feelings. I will say it wasn't necessarily the nicest. No matter what she would have said, I've been feeling concerns about my weight for a while. So it's 
kind of like a punch in the face a little bit, no matter what. Those of us who struggle with weight and things, that's kind of getting that, like, even right. even in the gentlest of ways can tend to be... Right. I'm so glad I don't struggle just, with my oh, weight shit, because I know? really don't care. <laughs> well, and see, but see, that's just it. It's like, that's part of the, I think, the compromise that we make is, like, how well do we know the other person and how will they take the information? If we think that they're going to be okay with it, we're probably perfectly mm-hmm. candid, like, like mm-hmm. some might say brutally honest, you know, and just say, this is, this yeah. is this, you know, like you look a mess or you look great or, you know, I really like this or whatever. And, um, I think that's what makes mm-hmm. the whole situation challenging and can be complex unintentionally is like, you know, what's their mood like and how are, or how are things going? What do I know about them? Like, are they dramatic and how they react to things? Um, you know, and, and, oh. and well, you know what I mean? So, <clears throat> mother, how dare you? Yeah, exactly. How very dare you? <laughs> so, but I, I think that becomes a challenge. Now, the reason that this was really coming through to me is like, it's important in terms of like friends and family. And sometimes, like, we come from families that are very honest. Oh, and yeah. And you may adapt your personality to represent that, like, to be like your family, or you may go in a different direction. And feel because of how you were treated that you're you're not going to do that to other people. You may be much more aware of your surroundings, and you might um, like handle things a different way and how you approach people. F- for me, having discovered and figured out when I was really young that I was basically well that I am gay, that I liked men was very difficult because. I didn't see that around me and there was no one in my family. I had no connections. Like I had no representation really. So I struggled with that a lot. And then after I came out, I felt pushback about it in varying ways. And then in the end, what I ended up deciding was, well, like if a lot of people don't agree with this or have difficulties with it or don't want to accept it, perhaps like, you know, I should just expect that all the time. And it didn't like light a fire in me to fight back. It made me much more reserved. And so I tend to be more cautious about things and like try to um, be aware of how things will come out. Like thinking ahead about like, you know, if I talk to this person, will they be upset or those kind of things. And I think a lot of that becomes a key piece of like your personality as you evolve. But as a community, there's, I think, some different factions, and it's not that we all get along or all on the same side, but there are some parts of the gay community that are like, you know, we must always live our truth, and, you know, we always must be honest with who are who we are, and the world just needs to adapt and get used to it, because we're here and we're queer, goddammit. You know, <clears throat> excuse me, so, like, last week when we were talking about the are we selling out concept, like, you know, are we being advocates? Are we fighting for what we want? But I also understand that there's a part of the community that's like, well, like, we don't have to be in people's faces. Like, we can just live our lives. Mm -hmm. And if you happen to discuss the fact that you're married to someone of the same gender, then so be it. Like, that's a way of being honest without being in someone's face. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's uh, difficult when you start taking into account like how people may feel about things or how they may react. And that's like being, it is being honest without being fully truthful because like just recently we were, I was discussing something with my coworkers and something came up where I, where I mentioned something about being gay and they're like, I didn't know you were gay. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. I, I just was honestly myself and it just right. at that time is when it came up, right? Because I didn't feel mm-hmm. the need to, to be, be like the first time I meet somebody. Hello, my name is Jeff. I'm gay. Besides the fact that's just weird. But... Well, I was gonna say you're not you're not Jack from Will and Grace, and that's one of the things <laughs> I think that could be difficult is individuals who are not familiar with our our, our broader community may have like very eye-opening experiences when they find out about something like a friend of mine recently revealed that they someone that they know that they work with found out that they are gay and married and were surprised by the type of person that they're married to i think those opportunities happen all the time 
that we reveal to others <clears throat> who we are authentically. And the more that we do that, the more people get a bigger picture of the different types of individuals there are in the world. That, yes, you can be gay and be fat and be hairy and be queenie and be butch and be like, and the list goes on and on and on and on. Um, but I think we've spent so long being concerned about how people react. I think we adjust more often than not, like how we're going to do things. And maybe that's where we're really on, like going through, like uh, <laughs> maybe we're post teenage years in terms of our lifespan as a community, you know, we're, we're moving beyond the, you know, get out of my bedroom, mom. Like, you know, <laughs> like angsty kind of like, you know, part of our cycle. And maybe we're moving into a little bit, I don't want to say mature, but we're kind of moving more into like a, you know, not quite so fighty kind of perspective. And we're just being honest, but we're not, you know, being radical about it. Maybe. Wow. Sorry, I've been reading this article from Psychology Today, The Difference Between Honesty and Truth. Um, a failure to recognize the difference leaves you exposed and gullible. That's main title, subtitle. Hmm. So, so it's just saying, and it says, honesty is expressing your feelings and opinions accurately, and truth is accurate representation of reality. If that makes <laughs> sense. So, I mean, that's what it's saying here. And I, right. I mean, I've been kind of glancing through it. It's just, yeah, I, th I think, it I think it's on. just, a, the, in this case, it's a matter of perspective and trying to find that definition. What's this, the difference between the two? So, because this is, yeah. Uh, as I said, it, I, I really think that honesty is more emotional. I, th I think somebody mentioned in the chat too. Um, well, truth is more of a scientific, factual thing, because leaving out some of the truth may make make it that you're not being completely honest. Right. I think I think truth honestly always comes. But down they're to very facts. Yeah, they're very connected, though. Right, and I think honesty is more a, a an attribute of like behavior, mm -hmm. of personality. Mm -hmm. Like, do I yeah. think? that Jeff is a truthful person. Like, is he an honest person? Um, I think that those are two different things, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so I, yeah. I think when it comes to us being a community and being there for each other, that's where the challenge comes in. Because I think universally we're, we're given this message that to be strong, to be, you know, uh, good, you know, stewards of, of humanity, whatever you want to say, that we are always truthful and we were always honest, yada, yada, yada. But we struggle with that because I don't think we have very good role models of that. And by that, I mean, like, just our immediate community, our immediate family, and then the broader picture. And I'm not, I realize I came out wrong. I'm not trying to say that, like, we have bad role models, but I think we find it difficult to connect and see those role models in terms of mm -hmm. being honest and truthful and I can understand why people like may feel to hold back a little bit because I think of all the times that you find out a celebrity comes out and some people are kind of like, oh, well, where the hell have you been for the last X amount of time? You know, like while well, the rest of us are out here rabble rousing, you know, going to prize, blah, 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 showing up, you know, for political action committees, whatever it is that we do, you know, to represent and then you find out, you know, someone's there and you kind of feel like, oh, well, you're a little late to the parade or whatever. I can understand that perspective. I can also understand where it's like, yeah, but they everybody comes to it in their own time. And we have this whole philosophy of like everybody needs to live their own life and that's their business. So I think we put celebrities or well-known people in a different circle mm -hmm. because we put them up on a pillar, so to speak. So we hold them to different expectations is really, I guess, what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And that can, become, that can become confusing on whether or not you feel that someone's being honest if they're you know, not owning their identity or whatever that thing is in that case. And it can confuse people uh, when they're looking for role models and they don't necessarily see them representing them in that case. Uh, 
So I, I don't think that there's really a perfect answer in bringing up this topic, but I think it's interesting that we, we say we want one thing, but we probably really struggle to accept it or to find mm -hmm. it or to get it. Um, or even to, to be it in that case. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. It's, Cause it's like very, Jeff's, it's always, go ahead. You know, I was just gonna say like with Jeff's example, you know, from the beginning about, you know, how a person looks, I think you, you do a whole quick calculation, like how well do I know this person? How do I think they're going to react? What appears to be the mood? <laughs> like, like you, yeah. like you t try to take this whole thing into account. How honest should I really something. be? Right. You know, like how much, how much truth am I going to deliver in this moment? You know, like, do you want to mention the fact that their hair looks whack or, <laughs> you know, or do you just want to kind of leave that out in, in the, the moment of the, uh, whatever that is. And, yeah. and I think that we, I think some of the bonds that we create are with people when we have a similar perspective about something that we agree yeah. about whatever that thing is um you know and that's where i think a lot of the you know sub communities come from people that like certain games people that like certain forms of entertainment you know i think we we kind of coalesce and come around that you know games of game of games whoops game of thrones just ended recently it's a television series i never read the books never saw an episode of any of it it's perfectly fine i'm not like i understand that there's a huge fan base but there's also other huge fan bases for other things that i may be involved in that they're not and I respect that. I also try to take that into account. So sometimes when people try to talk to me about things I can't relate to, I usually try to tell them pretty quickly. Like, I, I don't know. Like, no. <laughs> no clue. You know, it's like, like I'm trying to be honest in that moment <laughs> and deliver my, like, my, tru my truth fact. Like, sorry, I can't, can't help you. <laughs> like, it's honest. Like, honestly. So I have these two shirts that I just bought. Um, I bought not recently, but I bought two shirts. One is literally, like I said, the Doctor Who... Um, fuck the police box with the and it has a puppy walking out of it kind of thing and he's got a little um, fake collar with a um, a tie whatever and glasses I think and I have another one that says Bad Wolf on him I've worn both do I know a damn thing about Doctor Who no I know it's a TV show from Britain right. and there's a whole like I know a few things about it just of general knowledge I honestly just like the designs of the shirts as a person who also does pup play and, and, and they're cute. I can't tell you how many times people have been like, oh, like Doctor Who, da 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 And I'm like, um, mm -hmm, okay. Like, I just like the shirt. Like, and I have to, I have to say that. Like, I, I, I don't know anything about the series. I, uh, well, that's not true. I know little bits about the series, but I don't I mean, know enough about the series to be like all, a fan. All you need is the, the, the Eccleston tenant years. I, I have then, enough, then they'll understand. I I have enough kernels of knowledge to know that there's a show and what it's about. Right. But you have, everything you, else Are you no telling clue. me you've never seen an episode of Doctor Who? That is incorrect. I have seen episodes of Doctor Who, which is why I know a little bit about it. Right. Okay. But I have seen like recent episodes within the past like two, three years. I've also seen one or two of the holiday specials, but right. that's it. I don't know all the things about the show that a lot of people who, for many people who are hardcore fans who would probably wear a shirt like that, right? I don't know enough about it to be like having, trying to have a conversation. So I will let them know before they start going down that road or digging that, not digging that hole, but going down that rabbit hole of all the stuff about Doctor Who, I'm going to let them know pretty much immediately, like, you're barking up the wrong tree. For, <laughs> like, I no, know no pun intended. Much. Pun was totally intended. Oh, okay. <laughs> on, on, your, on your day off tomorrow, <laughs> you should start watching some Doctor Who, man. Yeah. Right, because yeah. David doesn't already have a whole other arms list of shit that he needs to be doing tomorrow. Yeah, like you need me, to start it, catching up uh -oh. on your nerdism. Anyway, look out, P Philip in the live chat says <laughs> petition for David to start watching <laughs> Doctor Who. <laughs> now, now we, now we're shit stirring. All right, all right. If we, so, if, we get, <laughs> if we get, if we get uh, 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 two hundred dollars uh, a month uh, uh, on our Patreon. 
Oh God. Damon will watch. Will start watching Doctor Who. But oh you have to God. keep it up, otherwise he'll just, stop. David, did you just spit take off camera? I almost spit take off camera. <laughs> Please spit take on it. camera. Yo. Yeah, don't damn it. It's funnier. But I mean, you I, it, turn to the what... side so you're not spitting on your computer, but still. Okay, so back to the topic. Um, yeah. Right, I think, like, you know, what, what mm. David is explaining is, like, question. you know, you're trying to be honest about the the truth of the matter. Like I was at work, uh, it was what over a month ago. Captain Marvel the movie is coming out, um, so I'm talking about how I'm going to go see it. I'm talking to uh, someone who sits next to me, aka the work wife. Uh, you know, as you kind of tease about those things, and so we're talking, and I'm explaining. She does not know anything about Marvel. Doesn't follow ah. like the comics. Doesn't has maybe seen one or two movies. Like that's just not really her thing, which is perfectly fine. Yeah, I have a, a, a compared to her, I have a wealth of knowledge, but I don't know that much. And we're talking and into the conversation. I'm explaining about how, like I said, I thought it was really cool that the Captain Marvel movie was released on International Women's Day and what a message that was and blah, blah, blah. We're talking and talking and talking. And then at one point she goes, oh, the captain's a woman. And I was like, yes. And I'm thinking, how does she not know that? And I'm like, oh, because she knows nothing nothing yeah where i know a little bit and i've known from the very beginning that captain marvel was a woman so therefore yeah. like but i get it because captain as a title is normally used for men so that's why she made that presumption so captain both of Janeway. us it both of us Any in a way are Army. having different truths yeah her truth is every time she's ever heard the word captain, it has been referred to a man. And for me, it mostly is men. But like you were just saying, Jeff, like there are a bunch of representations of women that have been captains. But to maybe... be fair, the DC version of Captain Marvel is is a guy. Actually, he's a boy. He says Shazam. And he becomes Captain Marvel. Although they don't call him Captain Marvel because of the lawsuits. Right. So... I think that uh, it, it, it that's another way to look at the topic is like everybody kind of has their viewpoint, their version of, mm-hmm. of what the truth yeah. is. And I think that there's nothing wrong with that. It just becomes difficult when probably more than anything, we don't agree. Like there's this whole like agree to disagree thing. It's like, well, you can, but th- but it's very tr- tr- <laughs> uh, uh, oh, fair. <laughs> Trying not to use all the words that we've already used. I think it's fair that both or all the parties can see the same thing just differently. And I think the challenge is to accept that. Oh, hi, Zoe. <laughs> Papa! All, of sudden, all of a sudden, I felt this like vibration of a tail wag, and I was like, what the hell? I, I heard the vibration of the tail wag, oh, I think. Okay. Or was that yeah. just her shaking? I don't know. Yeah, she was shaking, and her, her tail goes thumpa thumpa a lot. Yeah, there's no, there's no dog behind me, but there is one behind gary today somewhere yay she's on the floor yeah so, so what, what one of the things i think we can like jeff has been saying the big thing about honesty i think is that honesty is more emotional slash moral there's another new word to use it's not necessarily a a factual thing and while truth can potentially be honest it is not the same thing I mean, right. And, and, kind of... and I think one of the challenges or difficulties is people accepting mm-hmm. either or. I think a lot yeah. of people have uh, have difficulty accepting the truth. Yeah. Like I used this statement last night that I never saw the movie. I think it's A Few Good Men. Is it where Jack Nicholson screams and says, yeah. you can't handle the truth? Yeah. Um, yeah. And the, the reference is to, is to you are not willing to face the facts. If truth mm-hmm. is about facts, that people can't face facts. Yeah, but I think so, people also struggle with honesty, because I think that's where the emotions come into play. Mm-hmm. It can be difficult to accept either. Like truthful, I'll just you know I'm using myself as an example because that's how I am. Um, I got a call on Friday from my doctor's office. I went on. I had a physical on Tuesday, and my A1C is high. I'm pre-diabetic. Did I kind of maybe know little things about that? Yeah, I've known I probably need to lose some weight. 
So, but now it's kind of a not really smack. Well, I hate using. I like using smack in the face because that's the one thing. Like, it's a truthful moment. You need to change things, or you could get worse. Right. So, like, truth. Doctor saying this, which is also good because he also said everything else is great, which is awesome. Yay. It's just this one thing is like I'm pre-diabetic. I'm in that pre-diabetic range, so mm-hmm. I need to make changes to diet and exercise more to hopefully get off of that. So I have to make an appointment in six months. So Catch less sugar, happens. more sex. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> Here's how you get the exercise in. If you're this, this is I obviously it's a not, lot of great cardio. Sometimes a little bit of strength training, sports. stamina I, training. I, I am I'm putting this statement of liability out there. I am not a doctor. I do not play one on Doctor Who or on any <laughs> other thing, not on this podcast. But since the message was you are pre-diabetic, I think a solution could be less sweets, more sex. Therefore, you drop the sugar, the blood sugar level, and you get more physical activity. I'm just saying. Like less sweets, more sex. Let's just let's just make that a that's the, that's the better shirt. Just. <laughs> <laughs> just smashing. We need another shirt. Less sweets, more sex. I don't know if that would really sell though. I have a feeling people might be a little resistant to that as a statement or as a saying. Less less sweets, more sex. <laughs> anyway, but so, but yeah, like that's that's a truth. That is a truth like that's the thing like i'm gonna need and to do it's that honest. i'm gonna work on and it's on well uh, i mean yeah the it, way to honestly was, was you're in a pre-diabetic way. stage and you probably need to lose weight to get out of that yeah. Yeah. which is also very truthful based well, off I, of the facts of the matter that was done by test by a doctor right and I, yeah i mean it, I, I understand. I think in this case, you know, Damon, you're bringing up a, a good example, which is the truth is the facts. This is yeah. where your frequency level lies. This is where your weight is. This is where all your like your all your panel, whatever you want to call it, all okay. your meta metrics come back out. And yeah. I think that one of the things that some people have difficulty with is accepting reality, aka the truth, yeah. because people feel that they know better. And that has always challenged me because I've never tried to know better than an individual. Mm-hmm. That's not true. I'm going to take that back. When I was younger and I was trying hard or I was, I was working to fit in to be accepted, I would talk about things I wouldn't necessarily know very much. And then every once in a while I would meet a person who knew way more than me and I would probably be <laughs> So I, that's I'm like backtracking. I'm like, yeah, I've not always like – been on the upper hand of things and i think that's what's important though is i learned from that to be like if it's not my forte and i don't know a lot i am not going to try to speak from a place of like expert but i see how when i say certain things people get the impression at times they're like oh he knows a lot or he knows everything or he's a smarty pants like one of the things that at work i've you know gotten as feedback is i need to be careful because sometimes when i speak with customers they don't understand what i'm saying and I've known this my whole career, and it's not um, it's not a hindrance, but the truth is I went to college and got a college degree. I had some teachers in high school that were college course instructors. So I've had a kind of higher level education push, and I carry myself because of that a certain way. I use a certain vocabulary. That does not always go well with certain individuals who don't have that same background because they don't understand Mm -hmm. what I'm saying Mm -hmm. or they think I'm using 25 cent words all the time. And I'm not doing it to hold myself in a certain way and be like, oh, look at me. I know all the big words. That's not it at all. Like I never think about it. They're just words. They just come out of my mouth because I know what they are and what they mean. What I don't remember to do is to think, do they maybe not know what I'm saying? Or what mm. take it's by account, ga- especially. gauging that level of the person you're talking to and making sure you're speaking at their level right yeah because i probably live i think we all do this we live in our own brain like in a very egocentric way like i know what i'm saying why do you not understand what i'm saying yeah like we're both speaking Agreed. english and I that happens often to me. yeah that happens more often, like especially in like, especially in the corporate and you know, um, like work sectors, labor sectors, because 
it's often been a situation where um, what's the word I'm looking for? Where um, the meaning is misconstrued. Mm-hmm. You know, or people are, don't are understand the jargon, so you need to avoid mm-hmm. using yeah. jargon, whatever possible, or mm-hmm. uh, 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 instructing people in mm-hmm. in the jargon. Say, hey, there's this thing called such and such, which is this, and then you can start. Using I had the a sort of thing, but um, one of the things I know for me is I had I have an issue. I've often had an issue with being too harsh in my written um, words to people, mm-hmm. especially co- workers, um, um, co-workers, um, whatever. Um, and the reason for that is I tend to, for lack of a better term, I tend to get to the point. I'm concise. I want to know this, this, and this, and I need you to tell me this, this, and this. And why aren't you telling me this, this, and this? So I kind of, and I throw those in emails that I've gotten, I've softened over the years, but in a lot of ways, especially when I first started, people were afraid of me, um, just based solely on how I talked or wrote in emails. Mm-hmm. I kind of wasn't happy, but I'm kind of happy with it. I kind of like that intimidation factor. <laughs> Because most of so, I mean, on it, oh, yeah, again, honestly, I it got my results, it got what I wanted most of the time, not all the right. time. But the problem was, which is what my manager very kindly and politely told me, is that you have to keep this, you know, bridge essentially indefinitely with these people. You have to have these, you know, these are your uh, the people that you're getting the information from, and you need to have that dialogue, you know. So if they're like afraid of you, they may not necessarily want to interact with you outside of a certain space. And if something were to come up, they're not going to come talking to you. They're not going to be, they're not going to engage with you because they're afraid of you. Um, or they're going to get mad at you for the way you're talking to them. And then the next time you need something, they're not going to give it to you because they're going to be like, fuck you. I don't want to, you're such a bitch. Like, Right. I don't need to do shit for you. So it's those kind of things. Like you have to maintain that relationship. Um, so I learned to soften myself in some some aspects, not all. I've gotten better over time. But well, right. In, in your example, your boss or bosses over the years have been honest with you about mm-hmm. how you are looking for the facts, like the truth of the situation, because mm-hmm. that's what your job is. Um, I had something similar happen when I had started my career um, working in telecom. You know, I was told, like, it's great that you're helping people, but sometimes you speak, like, at a level they just don't understand. And I, it was a long conversation with a, not my direct boss, but with a boss. I think the reason why she was the one that spoke to me is because she was a female manager, because I think a lot of the other folks didn't know how to try to talk to me. Mm. And it wasn't that I was difficult. They just weren't sure how to approach it. And eventually she just broke it down. It was funny because we kind of went back and forth. I wasn't understanding. And then she finally said, okay, listen, this is not how I'm supposed to say it, but this is what it comes down to. You need to dumb it down. Like you need to (laughs) drop it a level or two because not everybody is where you are. Not everybody has your education level. And sometimes when you go to help people, you, you are helping them, but you are helping a different version of them who is not them. (laughs) Like, they did not go to school. They don't know all the words that you know. So they, you know, and I try to keep that in mind. But, you know, I worked solo for quite a while. I work with peers who were similar in education. So now that I'm in a position again where I'm speaking with individuals, about mostly the public, you know, that you're talking to, need to keep that uh, in perspective in what it is that you're trying to deliver. I know that I get complimented a lot and this isn't me tuning my own horn um the individuals that i'm assisting i make sure that i try to explain what's happening because there's nothing that frustrates me more than sticking to just the facts because people don't like the facts don't always paint the whole picture Mm -hmm. so when someone's like i don't understand why blah 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 well that's it like i could give you the facts like i could just stick with This is when this was done, this date and time. And then I could just stop or I could go on to explain, here's the like the six phases of how this works. 
you are in phase mm-hmm. X out of the six. Like, um, and I was telling someone last night, you know, that I prefer to give a picture for context because I think that helps people see what's going on or understand their place in whatever that is. Because if you're if you're doing something you've never done before, you have no clue. Like, am I doing it right? Am I doing it wrong? Like, what's happening? Where where is all of this at? And I think being honest with the person is a responsibility that we all have. And we just have to figure out our own way of, of being that way. Mm-hmm. And yeah, sometimes people aren't willing to listen or to hear it. I'm not, I was about to say that's okay too. I don't know if I agree with that. Uh, <laughs> well, no, because some people like they're just not in the right headspace. Like I had a person who was screaming and yelling at me the other day and, and they, after a little bit admitted that it wasn't me that created their situation, which I was like, I didn't say this, but I was like, damn right. Like, <laughs> like I did not create this for you, but you know, I can understand how frustrating this circumstance would be mm-hmm. if I was in it. Although I wouldn't be, but anyways. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's all about perspective. <laughs> so it, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so uh, to go back to the topic, I think kind of to get us to wrap up. I think we pride honesty, and we want the truth but we struggle with it because we are ego driven individuals mm-hmm. that have okay. difficulty at okay. times with accepting the truth and people mm-hmm. being honest. Um, yeah. One of the things I've learned over the years with some of my very good friends is I like to help find solutions to problems. And when mm-hmm. people come to me and they want to talk to me, Sometimes they don't want any help. They just want to vent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you want to vent, you have to tell me that's all you want to do. If you don't tell me that, then my mind is already like a couple steps ahead trying to figure out how to help you in your situation, give you options to consider, how to resolve whatever it is that you're dealing with. And so I've had to tell some people, if you don't want me to help you, that's fine. It's not going to hurt my feelings. But you tell me. Right, you need to tell me from the beginning, like, listen, I gotta get this off my chest, and I just need you to listen. Can I use you as a mm-hmm. sounding board for a minute? Right. And believe it or not, I can actually be quiet and shut up and not, like, say stuff back. Um, or you I can say day. stuff to, like, clarify what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Sometimes Gary can shut up. Sometimes. Sometimes it, Damon can shut up. It may Sometimes. involve a gag, but anyways. Um, yeah. No, but I mean, but it's the truth of me, but that's a key of the communication. Like that's a friend being honest with me and saying, I know this about you. So I need this out of you in this moment and vice versa. Me telling my friends like after struggling time after time and it took a, not a lot of times, but it took a couple of times with a couple of individuals for them. Like I felt like we were kind of butting heads and I'm like, well, this is weird. We don't normally butt heads. Like, we normally get along fine. And then I started to realize there was something about the conversation. And it only took one time with one person a number of years ago to say, I don't need you to help me. I just need you to listen for me to start figuring that out more and more later on when the situation would come up with different people. And I feel like we're butting heads and then be like, Oh, and then I would just call it out and I'd be like, do you need to just vent and get something off your chest and not want help? And it's not to say that I'm a bad person at helping or that I can't help. It's just there's a key difference. You know? I don't even know how I should react to this situation. Right. Yeah. Some people don't necessarily want the help. <laughs> they just want to get it, off, get it out there or they don't necessarily need the help. They want to figure it out on their own, which is also <laughs> fine. But some people just want – they just need to, like you said, rant and rave to whoever mm-hmm. – and then, like, okay, now that I've got it off my chest, let me, I know how to figure it out myself, so I'm just going to move on. But I needed to have that, that, like, I needed to get it off to someone, because if I don't, right. it's just going to sit here. Right. And some people just want an outlet. So, mm-hmm. you know, maybe they don't have a furry companion that they can just talk to, that <laughs> and just listen to them and love them and adore them, no matter what they say. Um, you know, uh, and I think that 
when people are in relationships, this is what they tend to do in the relationship is they feel each other out and they figure out how to use the other individual as their sounding board um, or as the person to, you know, get frustrations out with. Um, Maybe they have a room with a sling and other apparatus in it that they can use to take their frustrations out. I mean, I the room Same. with the sling would be perfect for sounding boards because they they can just be sit there, maybe tied to the sling while you sound them. Yeah. Totally different kind of sounding board, dear. That I totally got this whole... from... This is all Owen's fault. <laughs> <laughs> that was a complete <laughs> turn at Albuquerque moment. I'm just going to that. I was like... Owen, Owen just said... Owen just said... Turn. Owen just said, sounding board. Honestly, my mind is a pervert. Truthfully, I think of the funniest crap. I'm like, <laughs> after he said that, I'm like, oh, how does uh, that work? But to be fair, aren't they sounding rods and not boards? Well, I mean, you use but sounding rods. But if you're, you're if, you're trying, if you're trying, if you're trying to, know. yeah, maybe, uh, or, or something, I'm not sure. So, yeah. Anyways, anyways, I think um, big shocker. We turned it into kinky sex. Yay! Anyways, which which probably means we should start wrapping up. <laughs> yeah, I think so, we talked this. This is this is the way I feel about it. Um, I wish that people would be authentic as to who they are, that they feel comfortable being honest, and that they deliver the truth of whatever the situation is, mm-hmm. and that we're also equally open to that and to hear what a person yeah. has to say, and we're going to be accepting of that. Is it easy? Absolutely not, especially no. if you don't agree with what a person is presenting to you. Exactly. You know, I am not a person who necessarily connects with individuals who deny the facts. Mm-hmm. I own that. I am more like scientifically minded. I like to agree universally on things. And until they're proven differently, I believe in gravity. I believe in, you know, the sky being blue. <laughs> the is. is round. <laughs> yeah. There are things that you, you know, there, there, there's a, especially when the truth, not necessarily, is, or if they don't necessarily believe the truth, or to, to put something different in a different perspective, their perspective and their honest opinion is so drastically different from either the truth or, you know, your your honest opinion. So right. you tend to have that issue as well. Yeah. Mm. well guess what, folks? That's the end. Oh. There's plenty of ways to contact us. You can pop over to our website, CubsOutLoud.com. You can shoot us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Leave us voicemail sex or otherwise. Leave us your truth and be honest about it. Uh, 361 I'll talk at 361-265-8255. Wow. Uh, you can also uh, find us on your social media outlets on Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and right here on YouTube. At comes out loud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can be honest and truthful in our uh, entourage chat at tongueurl.com slash uh, telegram dash cul we will be honest and truthful about when we put up these sh- or uh, uh stream these shows <laughs> oh my god which you can s- which you can find out by subscribing to our google calendar at tinygirl.com slash calendar dash col which by the way only works on computers doesn't work on your phone <laughs> i found Good that out know. with uh, charlie recently i was trying to figure out why it wasn't working for him and then he figured it out on himself while I was trying to figure it out because I was on my phone. Oh, but huh. um, so just just an FYI, that's that's the truth of the matter. Honestly, oh wow. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> monster Damon. You're so good. You're already literally writing the synopsis <laughs> as you speak. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. That word in so often, it's like, true. Sprinkle it in. Very much. Anyways, you could also uh, get plenty of merchandise at our Zazzle store at zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud, which may be having some new products coming soon. Oh. New products, uh, new designs. Yeah. So Both. Uh, so keep watch for that. We'll let you know when they're post- posted on it right here on this show. Um, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. If we get over $200 per month, then we will force <laughs> Damon to watch Doctor Who uh, <laughs> as long as we're at that level. So uh, as little as a dollar a month uh, or as much as you want. No one never really said, mentions that. 
Uh, you can uh, join that, get some bennies along the way, uh, the more you uh, contribute. At patreon.com slash cups out loud. You can rate us on iTunes, subscribe to us through Google uh, pod- Play Podcasts. You can find me anywhere in the internet that says box set, box cup, puppy, box cup, box something or other. It's true. Mm-hmm. Um, oh God, uh, I am Theater Cup Seven Nine on most um, bear related platforms. Also, on, also on Facebook, or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gerber73. Uh, if you kind of don't care that much about the honesty and the truth and you're more into fantasy, you can go over to Twitter and go to <laughs> Gerber73XXX to see all the porn. Not my porn, just the porn. Yeah, it's the, it's, the porn that I like to look at. Let me put it, it that way. Wow. It, it's, it, it's true. It's, it's honestly. Anyways. <sighs> Can't stop. Anyways, (laughs) say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all. was an adventure yeah oh it was quite quite the adventure oh gosh (laughs) i was not expecting all all that at the end what the sounding Uh, okay i was not expecting that i was also not expecting (laughs) jeff to just go all owen's fault full Falls deep on trying to use those words so many times. I love going balls deep. You know I do. Actually, like, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, no, that. we haven't done wow. that. Wow. That is not the honest to god truth. Oh. Wait, did you just lie? Yeah, I. I you don't know how I'd like to go balls deep. That is true. I do not know that. I can presume that based on the things you said on the show. Oh, Steve. But you haven't had the actual evidence to the fact. Uh, Yeah, that's... I'm going to take you at your word. See, this is how much I trust that you are being honest with us about your truth. (laughs) Trusting him that he is being honest about the fact that he goes ball steep. Or not ball steep. You never know. You don't know. Nobody knows. Well, I'm sure the people he's maybe, if he has gone Bonzi, no. <laughs>